This is the China in Depth. Today is February 11, 2023. This article is from Financial Times. Chinese property brokers despair as home buyers sit on sidelines. The article first focus on Wu Hong, a property broker in Wuhu, China, is busy chasing new leads and has no time to play cards with her colleagues. Property sales in Wuhu are up 10% from December, but are still two thirds lower than January 2022. The Chinese government is struggling to stimulate the country's property market, which has been weak in the past two years due to government crackdowns and COVID 19 controls. Wuhu has an especially high number of unsold homes. Homebuyers in China are more cautious in making decisions due to softening prices. Real estate sector in China accounts for about 30% of the total economic output and is closely tied to the local governments. Government restrictions on high levels of leverage in the sector have resulted in some projects being frozen, and house sales and prices plunging. Sales of newly built homes in China's 30 major cities fell 31% in 2022 and continued to decline last month. In Wuhu, an average 90 SQM flat cost about RMB 900 dollars last month, still down a fifth from a year earlier. The economic fundamentals are too weak to support a dramatic turnaround in real estate, prompting developers to take aggressive steps to revive sales. The Golden Scale House has offered a RMB 230-000 renovation subsidy one month after a sale is completed, amounting to about 20% of the price of an average three-bedroom apartment. The GSH official said the project was barely making a profit after the discount, stating, we went through a very bad 2022, we have to generate cash flow in order to survive. The aggressive steps taken by developers to revive sales have had a positive effect, with sales rising by a third month on month in January. Key takeaways, developers in Wuhu have taken aggressive steps to revive sales, such as offering a 20% renovation subsidy. These steps have had a positive effect, with sales rising by a third month on month in January. Despite this, the economic fundamentals are still too weak to support a dramatic turnaround in real estate. Wuhu's aging population is partly responsible for the decline in house prices. Youth are leaving the city to pursue better opportunities, leading to a decrease in demand for new homes. 10% of the apartments in a popular residential compound have never been occupied, as investors had hoped that prices would rise. The local government has tried to incentivize the market by offering house purchase subsidies, but this has not had the desired effect as people are still opting for discounted existing homes. Local home buyers voiced caution. There is no need to rush when the market is still weak, said Li Hui, a 30 year old office worker in the city who has been hunting for a three bedroom flat for three months. Local authorities have also stepped in to prop up land sales, which the government relies on to make ends meet. Last month, the Wuhu City Finance Bureau set a 20% growth target for land sales this year. Developers remain unconvinced. It will take a long time for confidence to be restored, said the executive at the Wuhu developer, which has no plan to expand in the city. We are far from there yet. Local home buyers are exercising caution due to the weak market conditions. Li Hui, a 30-year-old office worker, has been searching for a three-bedroom flat for three months. The Wuhu City Finance Bureau has set a 20% growth target for land sales this year in order to prop up the market. Developers remain unconvinced that the market is improving. An executive at a Wuhu developer has stated that it will take a long time for confidence to be restored and they have no plans to expand in the city. Key takeaways, local homebuyers are exercising caution due to the weak market conditions. The Wuhu City Finance Bureau has set a 20% growth target for land sales this year. Developers remain unconvinced that the market is improving and have no plans to expand in the city. The next article is from South China Morning Post. China's youngest millennials told they're too old for jobs, and elder Gen Z workers are next. The article says China has a long history of ageism in the workplace, with job seekers facing age-related obstacles in their career paths from as early as age 35.
The COVID-19 pandemic has caused companies to reduce labor costs, making it harder for job seekers of all ages. A job posting for a Chinese automotive services firm in Sichuan province was recently posted, requiring the team to have an average age of 30 or less. This further demonstrates the growing prevalence of ageism in the workplace in China. This ageism is not only affecting older job seekers, but also the younger millennial job seekers who are facing increasing competition from a large number of fresh university graduates. The pandemic has exacerbated this issue, making it harder for job seekers of all ages to find suitable employment. Ms. Yang, a 31-year-old living in Shanghai, has applied to over 100 firms since last month with no success. Many companies are explicitly requiring candidates to be under the age of 30, and some have even lowered that number to 27, making it difficult for older millennials to get jobs. To make matters worse, many companies also require a postgraduate degree and three years of work experience, making it hard for young graduates to gain the experience they need before they reach the age limit. Yang worries that if anything goes wrong in her job search, she will forever lose the chance to find her career path. This article examines the issue of ageism in the Chinese workplace. It is widely believed in traditional Chinese culture that women over the age of 30 should return to their families, and this is reflected in the job market. Companies are more likely to hire younger, cheaper candidates who would have a longer career lifespan. The pandemic has further increased the prevalence of ageism as companies prioritize their own survival. Ageism is an issue in the Chinese workplace, especially for women over the age of 30. Companies are opting to hire younger, cheaper candidates with longer career lifespans. The pandemic has further increased the prevalence of ageism as companies prioritize their own survival. According to a report released by 51job.com, jobs requiring more than 10 years of experience accounted for only 10.5% of all postings, while the number of jobs requiring 1 to 3 years or 3 to 5 years accounted for more than 60%. Over 60% of surveyed employees over the age of 35 were in non-managerial positions, and more than 70% said their careers had stagnated in terms of opportunities for promotion before turning 35. Mao Yufei from the China Institute for Employment Research commented that youth are seen as more creative, most of them have not yet started a family, and they may be more willing to adapt to a certain amount of intense, fast-paced work out of a desire to pursue a career. China is recovering from its pandemic-induced downturn, with more jobs opening up to experienced workers over 30. The service sector and some manufacturing industries are leading the recovery. The government needs to introduce more robust employment policies and increase the ability of older job seekers to access job information. Companies should be regulated in their hiring requirements and the platform economy should be leveraged to absorb workers. Labor law awareness needs to be strengthened, and job seekers should be encouraged to defend their employment rights through legal measures when they encounter ageism. Age discrimination is illegal in many countries, but not in China which is facing a rapidly aging population and shrinking workforce. The Chinese Academy of Social Sciences released an annual report in November which highlighted the rising cost of China's labor market due to demographic changes. The report noted that companies have an unreasonable recruitment threshold of 35 years old, which has exacerbated the contradiction between supply and demand in the labor market. State media has urged firms to address the unscientific and unreasonable restrictions on job recruitment. An op-ed piece in the Workers' Daily, which is backed by the All-China Federation of Trade Unions, noted that such restrictions have caused chaos in the job market and must be corrected. The Chinese government is taking steps to address the rising cost of the labor market due to demographic changes. Companies have been urged to address the unreasonable restrictions on job recruitment, which have caused chaos in the job market and must be corrected. The next article is from Wall Street Journals. Tech layoffs hit H-1B visa workers hard. Jingjing Tan was recently laid off from Google, and worries she may have to return to her home country of China within 60 days due to her temporary work visa. In China, keeping large dogs as pets is often not allowed, so she worries about what will happen to her 75-pound German Shepherd. Tan and her husband, 
also in the U.S. on an H-1B visa, are concerned about his job security, as well as their house which they purchased in the Bay Area last year. They are anxious about their future every day. Layoffs in the tech industry have caused 257,000 job cuts since last year. Foreign workers are facing an especially difficult time finding new jobs. Companies are reluctant to hire, regardless of visa status. Tech jobs in the U.S. decreased by 32,000 last month. Job postings are down from a record high of 394,000 last March to 269,000 in January. Tens of thousands of workers on temporary visas have been affected by layoffs. Foreign-born workers make up nearly one-quarter of all workers in STEM fields. This is up from 16% in 2000. Layoffs in the tech industry have caused 257,000 job cuts since last year. Foreign workers are facing an especially difficult time finding new jobs. Companies are reluctant to hire, regardless of visa status. Tech jobs in the U.S. decreased by 32,000 last month. Job postings are down from a record high of 394,000 last March to 269,000 in January. Tens of thousands of workers on temporary visas have been affected by layoffs. Foreign-born workers make up nearly one-quarter of all workers in STEM fields. This is up from 16% in 2000. H-1B workers must find new employment within a few weeks or leave the U.S. Those laid off outside the U.S. are stuck outside the country with their work visa no longer valid for re-entry. 60-day timetable to find a new job isn't enough given the amount of time it takes to hear back from prospective employers and advance through technical tests and interview rounds. H-1B workers must find new employment within a few weeks to remain in the U.S. Those laid off outside the U.S. are stuck outside the country with their work visa no longer valid for re-entry. 60-day timetable to find a new job is not enough due to the amount of time it takes to hear back from prospective employers and advance through technical tests and interview rounds. Recent graduates like Sushant Arora, who received his master's degree in project management in the U.S. in 2021 and was employed as an analyst at a data analytics company in Boston, are impacted. 60-day timetable to find a new job is not enough due to the amount of time it takes to hear back from prospective employers and advance through technical tests and interview rounds. Those laid off outside the U.S. are stuck outside the country with their work visa no longer valid for re-entry. Mr. Aurora has applied for 500 to 600 jobs since being laid off and has had three interviews but is still struggling to find employment. Newman Vong was laid off from Twitter while on vacation in Malaysia and is now staying in Australia to avoid complications. His neighbor is taking his car for occasional drives and a friend is watering his plants while his apartment remains empty. Mr. Vong has been fighting hard to stay in the U.S. for the last decade and considers California to be his home. The current job market is difficult, making it difficult for laid-off tech workers to find employment. As a worker on a temporary visa, Mr. Vong has felt a constant pressure to hustle and prove his worth. Hiba Mona Anver, a partner at Ericsson Immigration Group, states that the 60-day grace period that foreign workers have to remain in the U.S. and try to secure new jobs does not apply to those who are laid off while abroad. If a worker on a temporary work visa is terminated while abroad, their visa is no longer valid for re-entry unless they manage to secure another job while abroad. Companies have been extending foreign employees' termination dates to try and give them more of a cushion to find a new role. Companies have a legal requirement to notify federal authorities of a worker's termination and pay for their airfare home in the case of H-1B visas. Companies are not allowed to consider national origin when determining whom to terminate. At-will employment applies, meaning anyone can quit or be fired. Foreign workers laid off while abroad cannot take advantage of the 60-day grace period to remain in the U.S. and try to find a new job. Companies must notify federal authorities of a worker's termination and pay for their airfare home. National origin cannot be considered when determining whom to terminate. The next article is from New York Times. China, still trying to play down balloon, finds it's getting harder to do. The U.S. has accused China of a broad surveillance program, 
which China has tried to play down. China is now starting to adopt a more confrontational tone and has accused the U.S. of pure political manipulation. The U.S. Defense Department official on China, Drew Thompson, believes the Chinese attempts to minimize the fallout are no longer working. The balloon incident has become a topic of discussion due to China's inconsistent messaging and lack of credible statements. Beijing was contrite and issued expressions of regret, but the incident has not yet faded away. Beijing's vague attribution of the balloon to an unspecified civilian company, and its claim that its wayward trajectory was an isolated mistake, has caused a degree of discomfort in Washington. China has been striving for a more conciliatory tone in its diplomacy, compared to the abrasive wolf warrior style. Beijing is focused on domestic issues and minimizing conflicts on the world stage, but the balloon incident has not yet faded away. The Biden administration said the vessel posed no threat to Americans. The State Department has detailed its view that the balloon was part of a global surveillance fleet directed by China's military. In his State of the Union address, President Biden promised to ward off Chinese threats to U.S. sovereignty and declared that few world leaders would envy Mr. Xi. China has hit back, with state media bashing Mr. Biden's speech and a Chinese foreign ministry spokeswoman calling Mr. Biden's comments about Mr. Xi highly irresponsible and a violation of basic diplomatic protocol. Ms. Mao has accused the U.S. of exaggeration and hypocrisy about the balloon incident. The Chinese Defense Ministry rejected a proposed phone call from their American counterpart. The Chinese ambassador to France stated it would have been inappropriate for Mr. Blinken to visit China. Chinese political commentators have maintained that the U.S. is the driver of tensions, but have also adopted a hawkish tone. Shen Yi, a professor of international relations at Fudan University in Shanghai, believes that it will be difficult for China-U.S. relations to return to a positive track and that the United States is mainly responsible for this. He believes that the recent balloon incident has shown America's true face. The Chinese Ministry of Commerce has welcomed a visit from U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen, despite the Global Times attacking President Biden's State of the Union address. The Global Times has also published an opinion piece, emphasizing the importance of Chinese and American economic interdependence in order to maintain a positive relationship between the two countries. Richard McGregor, a senior fellow for East Asia at the Lowy Institute, said that any explicit moves toward escalation would likely come from the United States, due to their anxiety about China's rise. China has committed to a new diplomatic direction for the moment, but may face added pressure to respond harshly as the reports from the United States continue. Douglas H. Pohl, a former American diplomat and scholar at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, suggested that China should start being more responsive before events start to accumulate. He believes that this would be smart for both sides and would help to prevent further tensions. The U.S. is more likely to initiate an escalation of tensions due to their anxiety about China's rise. China has committed to a new diplomatic direction, but may face added pressure to respond harshly as reports from the U.S. continue. Douglas H. Pohl suggests that China should be more responsive in order to avoid further tensions. Thanks for watching. See you all in the next one.